Hi guys, welcome to Shields Cooking. Today we're going to make a beautiful and delicious chocolate hazelnut fritine tart with a whipped mascarpone ganache. And obviously we have a very special guest today. <laughs> this is Matt Adlard, all the way from the UK. He flew in yesterday and we're going to make two beautiful movies and today the first one. So welcome Matt and I think we're just going to have loads and loads of fun. I'm very excited to be here. This is going to be a delicious recipe. You guys are going to love it. So I'm going to stop talking and Let's get cooking. Is that the right intro? Let's begin. Let's begin. Cool. <laughs> First, we're going to make the chocolate pastry. Mix 100 grams of cold butter with 70 grams of icing sugar and 20 grams of cocoa powder. Now mix this till it's a smooth and even paste. Then also mix in 50 grams of egg yolk. Now you can also mix this in the machine, but I just wanted to show you guys that you can mix it on your worktop. Um, I always use one hand and I keep one hand clean. Uh, for example, if I need to add flour or something else, otherwise it gets super messy. This looks really nice. So now I'm going to add 180 grams of plain flour and just mix it in as well. And then knead it into a nice pastry. Once it's a beautiful dough, transfer it onto a silicon sheet and put another sheet on top. Now flatten it using a rolling pin until it's around 3 mm thin. Then let it set in your fridge for at least 2 hours. So next we are going to move on to the dark chocolate cremeau, which is this beautifully smooth chocolatey cream that's going to sit on top of the financier. So what we're going to do is we're going to add basically all our ingredients apart from the chocolate into a saucepan. So I've got two large eggs. So about 100 grams of eggs, and then we've got 150 grams of whole milk. We've got 150 grams of cream. And then we've got just a little bit of sugar, about a tablespoon. And we're going to place that onto a medium heat. I'm going to whisk it constantly just until it's thick and slightly, and then we'll pour it over the chocolate. Now, once this is hot, what we're going to do is we're going to pass it through a sieve on top of a jug of chopped chocolate. Now you want to sieve it just in case you've scrambled any egg, hopefully not, uh, but just pass that through. We're going to let that sit for a couple of minutes and then just take an immersion blender, blend it so it's really smooth and we can chill it overnight. For the cremeux you'll need 200 grams of dark chocolate. So now we're going to make the praline and for that we're first going to make the caramel. Transfer 230 grams of sugar into a saucepan together with 70 grams of water and caramelize it on a medium heat. Once the caramel starts to color, add 350 grams of hazelnuts and while stirring, caramelize this for around 10 minutes till completely golden brown. Then spread it and let it cool down completely. Once the hazelnuts have cooled down, transfer them into a wet grinder and grind it into a beautiful smooth praline. You can also do this in a blender, but we just love using the wet grinder. Then pour the hazelnut praline into a bowl. Now transfer it into a piping bag and let it cool down in your fridge. Now for the mascarpone whipped ganache. For that first we're going to bloom the gelatin powder. Mix 24 grams of cold water with 4 grams of gelatin powder and let it bloom for 5 minutes. Meanwhile pour 380 grams of double cream into a saucepan. After that cut a vanilla pot in half, then scrape out the seeds and add them to the cream. Now bring this to a boil. Once it's boiling, turn off the heat and dissolve the gelatin. Then remove the vanilla part. Now weigh 130 grams of white chocolate and 100 grams of mascarpone in a measuring jar. Now pour the vanilla cream on the mascarpone and the white chocolate and emulsify it with a hand blender. Then let it set in your fridge for at least 6 hours. Now for the finiche. First transfer 25 grams of butter in a saucepan and melt it on a low heat. Then add 70 grams of dark chocolate and mix it. After that mix your dry ingredients. That's 25 grams of icing sugar, 20 grams of flour, 20 grams of almond powder and 2 grams of baking powder. Now add 50 grams of egg white and 65 grams of double cream and mix it. Then add the melted chocolate mixture and mix it once more. Once it's all combined, just add around 2 grams of flaky salt. This is for seasoning, but it will also give a little crunch in the financier and that will just bring it really to a higher level. 
Now transfer it into a piping bag and let it set in your fridge. So now we are gonna line the perforated tart rings. And the key here is you've gotta work quickly because that chocolate dough is so thin. If you're hanging around, it's just gonna to start to melt in your hand and it's a disaster. So we're gonna take it out the fridge or even the freezer. You're gonna use the tart cases just to cut out the bases, lift them onto a tray, and then we're gonna use a pizza wheel and a ruler and you're gonna cut nice long strips of dough. You're gonna line those along the inside of the tart rings chill them again and we can cut away the excess pastry but you just need to make sure you're working quickly so it doesn't melt just be very gentle with the dough because it's very fragile really be sure to keep the dough very cold now use a knife or a pellet knife to trim the excess dough now i know i'm repeating myself but you really want to work with the dough while it's cold if at any point you feel like it's getting soft or you try and lift it and it's gonna break, just put it back in the freezer, five, 10 minutes, and then you can just keep working back and forth from the freezer until, oh, there we go. It just broke there. Should have let it in the freezer for longer. <laughs> then fill the bottom of the tatelettes with the financier batter, and when necessary, spread it with a pellet knife. After that, bake them at 175 degrees Celsius for 10 minutes. Then remove the baking ring and tidy up the side with a grater or the back of a sieve. Now brush a thin layer of a mixture of 20 grams of egg yolk, 20 grams of cream and 4 grams of cocoa powder on the outside. Bake it for another 10 minutes and then let it cool down completely. Once the tartelettes have cooled down, fill them with the ganache. So we're on to the final decoration of the tart. To start that, what we need to do is whip up that mascarpone ganache that has been chilling overnight. So you can see this, you can see all the vanilla on there looking absolutely beautiful. What we're gonna do is we're gonna scoop it into a stand mixer. You're gonna add your whisk attachment. You're gonna whisk it on a medium speed until you have like a medium stiff peak. Now, because it's got gelatin in it, it is stabilized, but be very careful not to over whip it. You don't wanna walk away, don't take a phone call, anything like that. So just be careful, keep an eye on it. Make sure you've got that right consistency and then we'll add it into a piping bag fitted with a St. Honoré piping nozzle. This is going to take around 3 minutes. Then pipe some beautiful lines on top of the ganache. After that take the cold praline and pipe thin lines between the whipped ganache. Now finally finish these beautiful tartelettes with some hazelnut skins. Would you look at that? That's just beautiful. Okay guys, that's it for today. I think we're super happy with the result. The tatalettes really look amazing and I was so surprised by the wet mascarpone ganache. That was really delicious and that's definitely so far, by far my favorite recipe from Matt. <laughs> um, I only gave I, you one recipe, right? Okay. Yeah, but I really like that, so that's a good thing. Yeah, I think it comes up because of the stability of it. It's really nice to pipe. So whatever piping nozzle you're using, you get really quite a lot of detail in the top yeah. of your tart or whatever you're making. I will say the praline is good to chill it because if you cool it down a little bit, then it doesn't run quite as much. So when you're filling in these gaps, it can be a little bit runny if it's still warm, fresh out of the grinder. So just chill it a little bit and pipe probably less than you think you're gonna need. And that will just give you a slightly cleaner design. But otherwise, I think it's a nice little touch yeah, of that. Definitely caramelly, salty, nuttiness on top, which I'm hoping is, we haven't eaten any of it yet, so I'm hoping this flavor yeah. profile is gonna work. Yeah, I can't wait to dig in because right. they look amazing. Yeah. Shall we just go Ooh, for cheers. it? Cheers. There we go. Mm. Oh yeah. <laughs> the chocolate ganache as well in combination with wow. the bone. I've got it all over my face. Okay. I think the cremo brings like a darkness to it. Yeah. Which is really nice because you've got sweetness on the mascarpone and the praline on there. Yeah, and then in combination, I really like it, what you said that the chocolate, it brings the darkness and the depth. And then the mascarpone takes over and then the nuttiness of the praline, yeah. Wow. Really. Yeah, the praline just really sings at the end. Yeah. Mmm. That's super good. I would say I could take the pastry a little bit further to get a bit of more of a crunch on the bottom, but it's when you're baking the financier in the middle, you've got to kind of be careful with that, but... I think it's really, really a winner. <laughs> yes, there we go. Mm. So yeah, guys, I want to thank Matt. Thanks for coming. I've had so much fun today. It was a pleasure. Um, 
Next week we're going to do another video with Matt and then we're going to make a beautiful sunflower tart and I just can't wait to share that one with you as well. Uh, let me know in the comments on what you want to see next. Like and share the video and subscribe if you want to see more great content like this. And as always... Bon appétit! Yeah, bon appétit. <laughs> nice man. I thought you were going to say it and then I was going to try. <laughs> that was good. Oh, that's fucking delicious. Good, yeah? It's nice, right? Yeah, I think it's good, yeah. I think that it needs a little bit more... The pastry needs to be a little bit crispier, but... It's so good. I think the cremeau is really good.